Good evening and welcome to tonight's PSIT webinar. Tonight we are going to be discussing display devices and this comes from CompTIA's A plus exam 220-801, so the first of the two exams and it specifically is objective 1.10, so objective 1.10. I'm Brian Farrell. I am the instructor, or I am a instructor, and an instructor, or well, whatever. I'm an instructor for Edmonds Community College for the PACENT program. Specifically, I teach CIS 205, and I am the certificate mentor. There's a little bit of my background, and there are, well, that looks like the majority of my certifications. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into tonight's webinar, and it's on display devices. And specifically, we're going to talk about pixels and lumens, then we will kind of discuss the differences between analog and digital displays, and then, we'll, and then we will go over types of display devices. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into pixels and lumens. And we got to start with pixels. Actually, that looks like a pixie. So let's let's. There we go. There's pixels. So, what is a pixel? Well, it's actually a made-up word, and it's made out of uh, the word picture elements. It's actually a shortened. It is a contraction, and what it is is it represents the basic, most basic programmable unit of color on display devices or a computer image or a photograph. It's just a small chunk of color. In the modern display, the pixel is a 24-bit block composed of one byte units, so eight bits each of red, blue, green. And for those of you who understand light, uh, various combinations of red, blue, green make up all the colors that we see. Well, that's the next thing. So all the colors that you see on your screen are composed by combining various intensities or byte values of the color components. Uh, pixels are combined together and the image is formed. So the more pixels, the more, excuse me, <coughs> The more pixels that are present in an image, the sharper the resolution, which means the higher the definition. Uh, resolution is a method of establishing how many pixels wide and tall an image is, and that does have an effect on the sharpness of an image. Pixels are logical in nature. And what does that mean? That means that there is not a standard size for a pixel. Uh, you can actually dis determine the resolution of the dis of your display through software settings. Uh, we will get more into that a little bit later. But just remember that there is no standard size to a pixel. So what's a lumen? A lumen is a measurement of light brightness or light output. Uh, the more lumens that are present, the more light that is output. Now some display devices are rated for more lumens than others. That means that they put out more light. And what's that mean to you? That means that uh, if you're working in a brightly lit environment, you need a monitor or a display device that outputs a fair amount of lumens. And we get to talk about that a little bit more later as well. So now let's talk about some of the differences between analog and digital displays. And we get to start with analog. So how does this work? Well, an image is created digitally on your computer, and your PC delivers that to your graphics device, usually a graphics card. And if you're using an analog monitor, the graphics device converts that image from its native digital format into a modulated electrical current format. That's the analog signal that's delivered to the display. 
You now the display uses the analog format to represent the image on the screen. And what's that really mean? Well, not a whole lot. But analog screens tend to be slower in processing images to the screen, which means that they're not as good for um, video or video editing. They tend to be a little bit slower, and you can get some jitters and whatnot. Now, many digital displays can receive an analog signal, which they then convert back to the digital format. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you're outputting through a VGA port on your PC or your tablet or your laptop, whatever, that is an analog form. And if you're outputting that to an LCD display, that is actually a digital display. So it takes that analog signal and converts it back to digital. Back in the early days when LCDs were first coming out, it was actually kind of difficult to find that digital display that actually took digital input. Almost all of them only accepted analog, at least in the beginning. Didn't make much sense to me then, but hey, that's the way it was. So what's a digital display? Well, the digital image is created and delivered to the graphics device. The graphics device then transmits the image in a digital format to your digital display, and the image is placed on the screen. Digital display devices do tend to have faster representation, not representation, faster um, capabilities. They work better than going from digital to analog back to digital or digital to analog, period. Uh, and it is the newer standard, but that is the difference between analog and digital. I know, didn't go very deep into it, but you don't need to know very much either. So what type of displays are there? Well, we still get to discuss cathode ray tube, the CRT, even though if you're still, well, I shouldn't say that because there are still some people who do buy CRTs. But most people won't buy CRTs because they're old technology. With CRT, it uses a combination of a vacuum tube, an electron gun, and a fluorescent screen. CRTs are analog in nature. I've never seen a digital CRT. Don't think I ever will. And the way it works is the electron gun excites the individual pixels on the fluorescent screen, which lights up and presents the image. Now, that gun does it a line at a time. Go ahead, Andrew. What's your question? So is, this, is the CRT the only example of um, analog, or are there others? Um, you'll, you can still buy a lot of LCDs that do not accept digital input. Oh, I guess you said that. Um, okay. Yeah. So LCD yep. and um, the CRT. Yep, LCD and CRTs. I have yet to see an LED display that does not accept digital. But I don't look at them at all of them either. Okay. So the, Thank the you. Back, you bet. So back to the back to the CRT, the electron gun. Well, I just said that. Now each line that electron gun actually scans back and forth, and actually rather rapidly, and it paints or excites those uh, the fluorescent screen a line at a time, or a couple of lines at a time. And it usually does it from top to bottom. Now, if you're starting to get a headache when you're looking at your CRT screen, uh, change the refresh rate. Actually, you can raise it, raise the refresh rate, and that should take care of some of the eye strain. If you've ever been watching old movies and you see like a television or a computer screen in the movie and you see it kind of flickering back and forth, that's due to the refresh rate. If they had actually sped up the refresh rate on that monitor, you wouldn't have seen the flicker in the movies. 
what you were seeing there was the actual process of that screen being refreshed line by line. Uh, the good thing about CRTs is they have excellent color representation and it's very easy to adjust the resolution on of the screen to improve the sharpness. Uh, so I started this talk on CRTs by saying, you know, it's old technology, not very many people uh, buy them or want them. There's actually been a resurgence in CRTs in specific segments of industry, particularly particularly those that deal with images and printing. Because you can adjust the resolution so easy and the color representation is so good on CRTs, a lot of those people are still going, are still buying CRTs. You just don't see them that often. Now, a projector is a type of display device. Uh, this takes output from the PC, which is sent to the projector, which then transmits the image to a screen or the, a lot of times a wall. Your projector can be either analog or digital. And with your projectors, the things that you need to pay attention to are the lumens. You need a fairly high lumen output so that the image can be seen in a room that's not completely darkened. And also, um, boy, I lost it. That's bad. Um, so lumens are important. Oh, and the contrast ratio. Contrast ratio. Those are two important figures. The lower the contrast ratio, the more muddied, I'd say, the colors. You can't get a true black with a low contrast ratio. You actually need a fairly high contrast ratio to get a true, rich, deep black and a nice definition between dark and light. So remember, the lumens, they need a high output in lumens and you need a high contrast ratio. Now let's talk about the LCD, the liquid crystal display. So if you hear somebody say an LCD display, like I do on occasion, I'm being redundant. Sorry. Old habits. So an LCD is a type of flat panel monitor, and it uses an arrangement of liquid crystals and a fluorescent backlight to place the image on the screen. How does that work? Well, the liquid crystals are sandwiched between layers of glass and polarizing material. An electrical current is sent through that um, liquid crystal matrix, and it changes the orientation or alignment of the crystals, which then refract the fluorescent backlight. And that gives us the color image. So when you're looking at an LCD, what you're really seeing is the light from the backlight being refracted back out. The liquid crystals do not emit any light by themselves. And because of this, guess what? In bright environments, I'm sure you've noticed, LCDs are not the best display technology out there because bright light tends to wash out the image in a hurry. LCDs are a digital technology, even though, like I said, when they first came out, they, uh, you, you were hard pressed if you could, you were hard pressed to find any that would accept digital input, uh, but they are a digital technology. An LCD does have a native resolution for the screen size. That's pixels wide and high. And that produces the best image if you use the native resolution. As a matter of fact, if you adjust the resolution to something other than the native resolution, you will probably end up with a distorted image. 
Now, LCDs are faster and consume less energy than a CRT. By the way, they are also more environmentally friendly. On the downside, the color representation for CRT, or excuse me, the color representation on LCDs is not as good as that of the CRT. They've gotten much better than they were than when they first came out, but CRTs are still better at representing true color values than LCDs. So let's talk about LED displays, light emitting diode displays. Guess what? They are exactly the same as an LCD. As a matter of fact, they are an LCD. The only difference is the backlight is an LED light instead of a fluorescent backlight. That's it. That's the only difference, which causes a couple of other little differences. The backlight on an LCD requires AC current. That fluorescent backlight requires AC current. Well, your display uses DC current. So it uses an inverter to switch the DC current to the AC current that the fluorescent light needs. If you ever have an LCD screen that um, where the backlight or the inverter fails, usually it's the inverter, you can actually repair it, you know, take, take the screen apart, replace the inverter, and it'll come back. As a general rule, it's cheaper and easier to just go out and replace the screen, but you could do it. Now, with the LED, the LED backlight doesn't require AC current. It needs just flat out DC current, so there's no inverter. So that's the difference between an LCD and an LED display. Then we have plasma displays. Now, it, this is also a flat panel technology, and it uses fluorescent cells contained in the screen, and there are millions and millions of them on the screen. An electrical charge is used to excite the cells, which cause them to fluoresce in different colors, which causes the image to appear. Now, because the because of the fluorescent cells, there's no backlight. The plasma screen actually is emitting light. So there's no backlight in a plasma display. It's also a digital technology. It also has a native resolution. Now, plasmas require higher voltages than LCD or LED monitors. By the way, an LED monitor requires less voltage than an LCD, so it consumes even less power than an, L an LED, consumes less power than an LCD, but plasmas consume more power. Uh, they're also more expensive than LCDs or LEDs. They can be subject to burn-in, and that's where a static image, if it's left on the screen too long, you turn off the screen, you turn on the screen again, to a new set of images, you might see a ghost of that old static image. It's not the problem that it once was, but it's still a possibility. Now, plasma displays are even faster than LCDs or LEDs. They're awesome if you're running a bunch of high frame counts, uh, video or games but they are expensive. Uh, but they also have excellent color reproduction. They're on par, if not better, than the CRT. But, you, like I said, they're much more expensive. It's also getting harder and harder to find a plasma computer monitor, even though you can still find plasma televisions. So now let's talk about OLED, organic light emitting diode. Now this is an emerging display technology. 
Now, OLED is closer to LCD and LED technology than it is to plasma technology. The screen is composed of diodes that are sandwiched between thin layers of glass. An electrical charge is used to light up the diodes. And that places the image on the screen. Now, OLEDs displays are very thin. They are very light. They don't consume a whole lot of power. Uh, you think that we would be using them more and more? Well, we're not really. Uh, we're about the only place you will see OLEDs commonly is in the uh, cell phone market. And that's because the cost of creating the screens is kind of prohibited. Prohibitive. There we go. And why is it prohibitive? Well, because they're having a hard time actually making the screens. The yield isn't quite where it needs to be yet. It has improved. Uh, and that's evidenced by the fact that OLED screens have come down in cost somewhat. But it's still not quite, quite where it is with LCDs yet. But it will get there. So uh, I expect in the next couple of years for OLEDs to be, become more and more common. Now that covers all of the material that you're expected to know for Objective 1.10. Thank you for watching this webinar and for attending this webinar.